We're gonna bake a chicken, a barbecue chicken. I mean, no, not bake it. That was my word that I used when I mean actually pan frying. Frozen chicken, put in a bag, thaw it. Yeah, for about two hours. It's gonna thaw on the outside first, so don't let that fool you because you don't wanna start cooking it when it's thawed on the outside but frozen on the inside because then you'll overcook the outside and the inside will still be frozen. So you wanna wait for it to completely thaw. Um, and so you check to see if it's firm. So there's some stuff on the side. We're gonna make some garlic, red mashed potatoes. First thing that we have to do is all these have eyes on them. It's kind of gross, it looks gross, but that's what potatoes do when you let them just kind of sit there. The kind of general rule with red skin potatoes is two potatoes per person. Since it's only searing myself tonight, I'm going to use just four potatoes, wash them, rip off the eyes. When you first get red skin potatoes, the eyes will come in like ever so slightly, kind of like how that one is, just barely there. So when you're doing potatoes, first thing you gotta do is rip off the eyes and wash them, obviously. You need to get some boiled water starting because potatoes take the longest to cook. They're gonna take longer to take than chicken, so you gotta get that started going right away and it takes a little bit for water to boil in the first place. Just make sure that your potatoes can be submerged in the water. There we go. Because this can boil, you can leave the stove on high because you want the water to get like, it's not the yeah, water can't get burned, so you can leave it on high. Because we're going to make garlic mashed potatoes, we're going to cut these into quarters. Because it's going to obviously make them cook easier, and then once we actually get to mashing them, it's going to be easier as well. You never want to cross-contaminate chicken or poultry with anything, so you wouldn't want to cut chicken up and then use the same knife to do it or you wouldn't want to cut chicken on this cutting board and then like cut the potatoes on here afterwards. So now that those are there, normally I'd wait for the water to boil but what this does is once it starts boiling you're going to put the potatoes in and you risk hot water spilling out so while it's still like in its normal state I'm going to put the potatoes in now. See all that splashing? Get yourself burnt up safer than putting it in if it was already boiling water. We're going to heat up our pan. Right now we can just put it on low for a little bit um, because we're gonna season the chicken while we're waiting for the pan to heat up. We don't wanna, you know, burn the oil. We want to use like an olive oil. You can just glaze the top of the pan. But you just wanna have just enough oil so you can actually make sure your chicken's not gonna stick. We can just let this heat up for a little bit while we add seasoning. We have, <clears throat> Pure ground black pepper. We have seasoned salt. We have seasoned salt. We have original essence from Emerald. And we have signature rub, Texas barbecue. And then we have this, which is something we'll add after the chicken is, is done. Uh, because it's, you know, it's just, that's how it's done. After touching the chicken, you wanna make sure you wash your hands because you have chicken juice on your hands. You don't wanna like touch everything, get chicken juice all over your things. I actually just touched the chicken and I don't want to touch the tops of these, so I actually have to wash my hands, so this is a good example. Right? So the chicken juice is gone now. Season both oh. sides with everything first. <laughs> Bam! Bam! Okay, we're going to add one precise tablespoon of chicken rub. When you have any pan and you're heating it, don't leave this out. You know what I mean? I we'll always leave it to the side. So if this is out and someone comes by and knocks it and spot, splash hot oil or water in your face, not a good thing. Got some tongs. We're just gonna start putting them on there. We'll probably leave them on here from between five and seven minutes, let each side cook. And these are gonna be our designated chicken tongs. Just kinda let that sit for uh, Five minutes or so, 8.15, next one. Uh oh, I'm gonna have to mix, mix this up. The best way to tell when you're cooking potatoes, especially if you're gonna mash them, is I take a fork and all you have to do is poke them and see if the fork goes into them easily. You should have like little to no like fight with stabbing them. And then that's how you know that they're ready to be eaten. And 
more importantly, ready to be mashed. Turn this to low for now. We got a strainer over here. Dump that out. Everything's gonna go right back in the pan. Since we only have two of us, depends on how much butter you wanna add, but because there's two of us, two tablespoons is about good. About one tablespoon a person. We'll throw that in there. Just gotta get some salt. And then we have almond milk. Like a quarter cup of this. And of course, got this minced garlic right here. And it doesn't need a lot, because you don't want to overpower it. Just a little scoop about that much. Maybe a little, 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 little more. That's about it. Just gonna start stabbing it. Obviously, you can have a better, like I don't have a potato masher, unfortunately. It's just all manual work here to like cut these up and twist them and get everything mixed in there together. As you can see, it looks a lot better now. The milk is absorbed, everything has. And now we're going to be placing the corn in the microwave for three minutes. Make sure you place a paper towel over it so it doesn't go everywhere. Make sure you add a tablespoon of butter onto the top of the corn as well. And while the rest of this is cooking, we're just gonna turn it on low because it's pretty much ready. And uh, all we have to do essentially now is get ready for the corn. We have our fruit section right here, pineapple chunks. This is delicious. And um, barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. In some circumstances, they have a brush for this. We actually have that right here. Uh, we just received intel from on set and we're going to put it on there first and then brush it. Careful, don't touch your hand to the pan. Yeah, you don't want to burn your hand like I almost did. Um, I'm an absolute professional. We'll just kind of make sure everything's barbecued. And then we'll just, you know, we'll wing it. We'll do it live. While Sears doing that, I'm going to get the pineapples ready by draining the juices. This is the easiest part. The hardest thing about cooking is getting all the timing right between the potatoes, between cooking the chicken the right, putting the pot, putting the corn in the right time until you finally put it on the plate and serve it. So everything has a method. That's just one of the trial and errors that you're gonna have to endure when learning how to cook. So here's our meal, as you can see. My suggestion is to take that corn right there and put it in the mashed potatoes, the garlic mashed potatoes. That's really good. I think I'm gonna actually really eat it, like hardcore. Like I'm not just gonna eat it, but I'm gonna like really eat it. There you go. Modified barbecued chicken breast Ooh. from the skillet. Ooh. Garlic mashed potatoes, corn, and pineapples. Feast like kings.